Okay, so saturated fat as a food sensitivity is something I've been thinking a lot about lately. And, you know, there's a lot of nasty debates online about saturated fat. And there's a lot of page view clickbait. Um, this is the truth about saturated fat. You've been lied to. You've been lied to about saturated fat. Yeah, you know, in some sense, we all kind of have been lied to about saturated fat. The idea being that saturated fat is pure poison. You can't eat any of it. If you eat any of it, it's going to cause heart disease. It all goes back to the diet heart hypothesis, Ansel Keys, the idea that dietary fat increases cholesterol, which increases heart disease risk. That's outdated thinking for many people. And to their credit, critics like Nina Teicholz and some others in the low carb community have really pushed hard against this, um, said that the diet heart hypothesis is outdated. Saturated fats have been unfairly villainized and do not cause heart disease. The Journal of American College of Cardiology in their 2020 state-of-the-art review came out and said the same thing. They said, it's time to remove arbitrary upper limits on saturated fat consumption. The U.S. dietary guidelines at 10% of daily calories from saturated fat or less is just too strict for most people. And you look at studies like Pure and the Minnesota Coronary Experiment and the Women's Health Initiative and some others you can see that, look, when you just drive saturated fat consumption down to these crazy, crazy low levels, you don't really get a benefit. And in the case of Pure, the highest quintile of saturated fat consumption at 14% of daily, daily calories actually saw lower stroke risk. So it's clear that, that, that there needs to be some updates to, to this line of thinking. And if you're out there and you're really afraid to eat any saturated fat and you don't have whole milk in your latte or um, you know, a piece of cheese, you're, 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 you're probably being too hard on yourself. But what I want to kind of offer up today is potentially a solution to this, this debate. You know, some of these like Joe Rogan debates, Dr. Dr. Joel Kahn versus Chris Kresser and, you know, in, in, in this kind of back and forth is let's just acknowledge that there's a lot of heterogeneity in the population. People respond differently to saturated fat. And just because you're removing these arbitrary U.S. dietary guidelines from the operating system of a lot of people doesn't mean that, that there can be no cap on saturated fat consumption. Because the thing that's funny is like, look, you, you look at the Women's Health Initiative and the, the, the headline is, well, there's no reduction in cardiovascular and stroke risk on a low saturated fat diet. But what are the two cohorts? You have one group that's consuming nine and a half percent of the, their daily calories from saturated fat. So just beneath the US dietary guideline threshold. But the next group where there was you know, no increased risk was at 11 and a half to 12% of daily calories. And the same is true of pure. I mean, 14% daily calories from saturated fat is really not a high saturated fat diet. You don't have data points, large data points, where you're comparing very, very low diets, very, very low saturated fat diets to like crazy high saturated fat diets, like the you know, Atkins style diets and its modern incarnations, like the Gary Brecca diet or the Bulletproof diet. And so when you read through the, the Journal of American College of Cardiology review, which is a, a great synthesis of all this research, kind of touches on all the big studies, you know, MESA and all of the big studies that have contributed to the, to the sinking of the diet heart hypothesis battleship. What you find later in the review is this, is this concept of saturated fat sensitivity. So the JACC review really leans into the latest research, which shows gene diet interaction. They specifically discuss ApoE4 carriers and say, look, there are people for whom a low saturated fat diet is appropriate. We just don't want to see these blanket arbitrary upper limits in, you know, public policy driven widespread, widespread prescribed guidelines. And they talk about ApoE4. They talk about the MESA trial, which showed significant gene diet interactions in not just um, blood lipid response, but also in inflammation. There are, there are people out there, you know, PPAR alpha and PPAR gamma are two big genetic markers that come to mind for me in, in, in our scoring for, for, for whom a diet that's high in saturated fat is going to make your lipids look a lot like you have metabolic syndrome or type two diabetes. It's not just that people are going to go on a high saturated fat diet and see increases in their, you know, large fluffy cholesterol. Some people are going to eat saturated fat and see major upticks in triglycerides and small dense LDL. And so the idea is like in a room of 100 people, you're probably going to see 30 to 35 people that are going to see really bad things happen to their, not just their LDL cholesterol number, but their ApoB number. And those are the people who are saturated fat sensitive. And, you know, understanding that this phenotype exists rather than just browbeating and you know, one size fits all debates and everybody's going to, you know, it's like trench warfare. 
you know, you have vegan plant-based advocates who want to win this diet, you know, full stop for everyone. And then you have the low carb community who sees data that tends to undermine the diet hard hypothesis and then wants to run with it and, you know, essentially have everybody adopt a ketogenic diet. I don't think either side really works. Um, in terms of the food sensitivity issue, the, the analogy that I would make is to wheat. It's like, why are people afraid? Many people are afraid of eating wheat or why are there arguments against eating wheat? The idea is that eating wheat, the proteins in wheat upregulate zonulin, which increases intestinal, intestinal permeability. It's like leaky gut, you know, the, these, these intracellular tight junctions of the gut wall, which are supposed to be closely held together are, you know, open up and, and particle microscopic particles of food and, and things from the small intestine get into the bloodstream that shouldn't be there. And the immune system recognizes that invader and it attacks and that creates inflammation. Well, the same is true for somebody who goes on a high saturated fat diet and they see a big increase in ApoB. It's like if your ApoB shoots up on a high saturated fat diet, you know, just as the epithelial wall of the gut is protective, the endothelial lining of your arteries is protective. And if an ApoB particle crashes an artery wall and the subsequent immune response creates foam cells and chronic inflammation, it's really a very similar thing. You can draw parallels between the two. So walking around with elevated ApoB as a result of your high saturated fat diet is inflammatory. And when you see that reaction, that hypersynthetic reaction to eating a diet that's high in saturated fat, that's called being saturated fat sensitive.